uh, really should be 131. And so we put another exhibit sticker and I showed the state and we changed it to 131. Top one. Oh, okay. And then there's one other matter. The um, This last witness was shown a photograph by the state which had not been admitted and was uh, projected on the screen and he made uh, he made uh, a testimony. He, uh, he expressed it, that the uh, lips of the child were, was not caused by the mask. That's true. And uh, that is incorrect. And I just would ask that that be corrected in front of the jury. Well, but there, there hadn't been an objection, so I just assumed that there had been court out as between. I saw it at the corner of my eyes. I couldn't tell that it had been that it had not been admitted. It was number. Uh, 132, I think. 232. 232, Judge, and I did not publish it to the jury. No, but I also don't know that it was admitted. I didn't admit it, Judge, uh, for that purpose. I just was showing it to him um, for his orientation, but I did not admit it through him. But it's your intention to have this admitted through another witness? Yes, Judge. Uh, and probably the medical exam. Yes. Okay. Um, it's, uh, since they're going to connect it up to something else, uh, I don't know that it requires instruction to the jury. Does that help you to know where they're going with that? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and bring up the jury. If you can raise your right hand to be sworn, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Take a seat. Please state your true and correct name for the record. Roy Scott Nix. Okay. And how do you spell your last name? N-I-X. How are you currently employed? With the Henry County Fire Department. And what is your job with the Henry County Fire Department? Uh, being we're cross-trained, we're uh, as I'm a firefighter and paramedic. Okay. And how long have you been a paramedic? Uh, 22 years. And have you always been with Henry County? Uh, as far as the fire department, yes. Okay. I want to go ahead and bring you back to November 17th of 2015. Do you recall responding uh, to an, uh, an incident involving a child on that day? Yes. And uh, do, um, do you, well, let me ask you this. Do you recall um, what vehicle you happened to be in on that day when you got the call? I was on Rescue 3, and or excuse me, 13. Rescue 13. Yes. And what is Rescue 13? It's the ambulance that is stationed out of Station 13 on Highway 20. Now, does the Henry County Fire Department have different vehicles, different uh, types of vehicles? Yes, we have fire trucks, ambulances. All right. And uh, can paramedics sometimes be staffing the fire trucks? Yes. All right. And vice versa? Yes. All right. Um, when, you, um, were disp when you were dispatched on, on this particular call, do you recall the time that, that you were dispatched? Uh, I believe it was somewhere around 1740. Okay. Uh, if you have my run report, I could probably tell you the exact time. Sure. Let me let me uh, show you this or help refresh your recollection. Uh, yes. Uh, the unit rescue 13 was notified and dispatched at 174236. Okay. And uh, what information did you originally receive about this particular call? Uh, it came in originally as a, a two-year-old female choking. Okay. You said originally. Did that change at all while you were in route? Yes, it did. 
And what did it change to? It come into a person unconscious, uh, CPR in progress. Now, where were you, if you recall, when the call came in? I was sitting at the red light at Macon Street in the city of McDonough Square. About how far um, was it from your location to the incident location that you responded to? Uh, it was like eight or nine miles. And how uh, quickly um, were you able to, uh, to get to that location? Uh, we made it in, in just over 11 minutes. Did your, um, did your report indicate the exact time that you arrived on scene? Uh, exact time on scene was 1755.30. Now, were you the first uh, unit on scene? No, sir. Who was on scene when you arrived? Engine 4. And uh, specifically, who was on Engine 4? Uh, then it was Lieutenant Gibson, but now it's Captain Gibson and uh, Ken Jones. Now, do you recall when you first saw the patient that, that evening? Yes. Um, and where were you when you first saw the patient that evening? Uh, when I stepped out of the truck. And where was the patient? Uh, in Captain Gibson's arms coming out the front door. And what did you observe when you first saw, uh, and that patient was Layla Daniel, correct? Yes. Um, what, um, what did you first see when you saw Layla Daniel? Uh, she was in Captain Gibson's arms with a, a blanket or a towel wrapped around her. And what, how would you describe her, um, her condition? Lifeless. Yep. Um, what happened um, after you saw Layla? Uh, Captain Gibson got in a truck first. I followed him in, um, and we immediately began assessing her. We determined again that she was not breathing and had no pulse, so we started CPR again, uh, and we followed our what we call ACLS protocol. Okay. Now, the um, did you ever hook her up to a monitor? Yes. And when she was hooked up to the monitor, what was her rhythm? Asystole. And being a systole, what does that mean? There's no electrical function with her heart. Was the heart beating at all? No. Was she breathing on her own? No. Um, and at some point, did you all do something to assist her in breathing? Yes. All right. Did you actually intubate her to someone else? No. Captain Gibson did. The, what did you do? What was your role um, in the treatment uh, of Layla I was Daniel? lead medic. I was on the rescue, so I was lead medic. Um, I made sure that we started the assessment put her on the monitor, uh, Captain Gibson um, intubated her and made sure the CPR was continued and among other things that we that are normally done. At some point you mentioned that she was being carried in a towel, correct? Yes. At some point was that towel taken off? Um, it was opened up on the stretcher. I, I can't recall for sure if it, she was taken off of it completely, but when we laid her on the stretcher, we had to open it up to expose her. And when her body was exposed, did you notice anything? Yes. What did you notice? Uh, multiple bruising uh, around her arms, hands, uh, legs, and uh, hip area, torso. At any point, did you turn her over onto her back? Yes. And did you notice anything when she was turned onto her back? Yes. What did you notice? Uh, more bruising. I'm showing you what's been admitted as States Exhibit 67. Is this what you observed? Yes. The, um, have, have you been a paramedic for 22 years now, correct? Yes. Um, and have you responded to other uh, calls for young children around two years old? Yes. Have you ever responded to calls where CPR has had to be used? Yes. Um, in all of your 22 years of experience, have you ever seen anything like that from resuscitative methods? No. How about the Heimlich maneuver? Have you ever had to respond to a call where perhaps the Heimlich maneuver was used? Yes. And in all of your 22 years of experience, have you ever experienced anything like that day? No. So you are work. You uh, said that you were working on the child. What what means did you take to, to attempt to save her? Uh, of course, we've done the CPR. Uh, we we established an IV line. Uh, it's interosseous. It goes into the bone in the leg, the tibia. I was made one attempt at that. It failed. Uh, we made another attempt, and it succeeded in the right leg. Uh, then we uh, began pushing uh, the cardiac drugs that we carry, uh, and Brian intubated her. I'm going to show you uh, on the on 
screen what's been admitted to States Exhibit 2. You mentioned something about an inner osteus. What are you talking about? Can you see that here in the picture? Yes. And uh, there's actually a pointer there if you want to use that to point. What are you, it's over on that. Oh, I don't know if that one works. Sponsored by the oh. old school kind. Oh, the old school, okay. You can't see it, but it's just same thing as this right here in this leg. And why did you, uh, why are there two in her legs? The first one on the left was a failed attempt. And what do you mean by failed attempt? When you insert the I.O., you're supposed to aspirate, and if you get bone marrow back, you're in the right spot. If you do not, then you're not in the right spot. So the first attempt, uh, is it safe to say that you, you weren't in the right spot? Yes. How about the second attempt, the, the one where we see the bandaging? Yes. Uh, we aspirated out of it, and so we secured it, and that was our main route of administering drugs and IV fluids. So it was through this line that you were able to administer the drugs? Yes. What are some of the drugs that you administered to Layla on her way to the hospital? Uh, the drug of choice and for the uh, ACLS protocol and for his cardiac arrest is epinephrine. Um, at any point uh, while Layla was in the back of the ambulance, uh, did she ever um, have a heart, did she ever have a heart rhythm? No. Did she ever breathe on her own? No. Um, how long did it take you to get to the hospital? I believe, according to the run report, 11 minutes and some odd seconds. Okay. Do you remember, does it say the exact time yes, you arrived at the hospital? we arrived at the hospital at 1826. Now, the entire time that you were in the back of the uh, ambulance was... Uh, were you all attempting to, to do resuscitative methods? Yes. And what are those, besides the, uh, the, the drugs that we've heard about, what, what are the other means that you attempted to do? CPR. Okay. And was it you administering or someone else? Uh, we all had a, during the swap out, you know, we all take turns. It's, you have to swap out every so often. And do you recall how you administered CPR to, the, the method you used to administer CPR yes. to? And what did you do? It's one hand, palm of your hand, center of the chest, nipple, center of the nipple line, center of the chest, compressed about an inch, inch and a half. For a two-year-old child, is it, is it part of the protocol that you've been talking about to use that one, one hand? Yes. <coughs> Do you recall the coloring of Layla's skin while you were transporting her to the hospital? Yes. What was it? Pale, ashen. Would you, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second word. Ashen. Ashen. Okay. Now, you, um, at some point, did you get to the, well, at some point, you did get to the hospital, right? Yes. All right. What did you all do when you got to the hospital? Uh, when we got to the hospital, we turned over care to the ER doctor and the ER nurses. Now, I want to ask you um, about some of the other parts of her body. Um, did you notice anything unusual about any of her extremities? Yes. And what extremity did you notice something unusual about? Uh, the left arm. And what did you note that was unusual? Uh, it just didn't look right. And looked, when you say it didn't slightly look Slightly right. deformed. <laughs> slightly deformed? I'm going to show you what's been previously admitted as State's Exhibit 34. Can you see a, uh, on State's Exhibit 34? Yes. And where uh, do you see what you um, what you viewed at that time to be slightly deformed on that picture? Yes. And if you can take that pointer and kind of show us what you were looking at. This area right here. Okay. I want to actually go through. This is uh, States Exhibit Thirty Six. Do you see any deformities on the other arm? No. Is there any, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 19. Was there anything about the medical intervention that you all uh, did that night that would have caused anything seen in State's Exhibit 19? No, sir. State's Exhibit 5. Uh, was there anything about the medical intervention seen in State's Exhibit 5 that would have caused any injury to Layla Daniel? No, sir. Exhibit 27 I'm showing you. Was there anything that you all were doing in the back of the ambulance that would have caused any, any of the bruising seen in State's Exhibit 30, uh, 27? No, sir. And State's Exhibit 48. 
Was there anything that was being done uh, to resuscitate Layla Daniel that would have caused anything in State's Exhibit 48? No, sir. Out of all the bruises that you saw on Layla Daniel, were they all there uh, when, you, when you started the resuscitative efforts? Yes. Nothing further. Ross? Wrote a statement, did you not? Yes, ma'am. And in the statement, you didn't say anything about a deformed arm, did you? Um, if you could hand me my statement, I can find out. I'll read it. Let me see if it refreshes your No, ma'am, not in my statement. What happened to the towel or the shirt, whatever it was that you were laying the child on? What happened to that? I can't recall. Did evidence not pick it up? I have no clue. You're not a doctor, correct? No, ma'am. And Mr. showed you this picture, Exhibit 27, and asked you if anything you did could have caused that. Could that have been caused by somebody administering back blows and um, having done it too hard? No, ma'am. It couldn't have been. Do you know what caused this bruising? No, ma'am. Okay. So you don't know what caused this bruising? I do not. So you don't know that it wasn't pounding of somebody pounding on her back? No, I do not know that for sure. No, I do not. So you have no idea what caused it? No. And you don't know whether it was as a result of faulty uh, administration of back blows? I don't know that for sure. Thank you. No. Thank you. Step down. Any objections? Please be excused. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. State will call next witness. State's going to call Officer Palmer. Officer Palmer. I'll wait up here, please, sir. James Palmer, P A L M E R. And your first name? I'm sorry, J A M E S. And Mr. Palmer, in 2015, were you employed with the Henry County Police Department? Yes, ma'am, I was. In what position did you hold the Henry County Police Department? I was a patrol officer. And as a patrol officer, on November the 17th of 2015, did you get a call to the location of 1521 Lincoln Terrace? Yes, ma'am, I did. Do you recall what time you received that call? Second, just look at my report at uh, 5:48 that evening or that afternoon. And um, is that the time that you arrived at the location, or the time you received the call? That's what time I received the call. Okay. And what time did you arrive at the location? Oh, uh, hold on here, one second. Um, around 5:54. And what was the nature of the call that you received? Uh, it was a sick call. And what, when you arrived at that location, what did you observe? 
When I first arrived on the scene and I exited my vehicle, I saw a firefighter leaving the house without the front door with a child in his arms going, and he went right into the ambulance with the child. And what did you do at that point? I went and met with the uh, mother, uh, Ms. Rosenbaum. And where was she at that time? She was inside the house. Did you observe anyone else inside the home? No, I did not. And did you speak with Ms. Rosenbaum? Yes, I did. And what did you speak with her about? Uh, the child and what had happened. Okay. And what did, you, what did she tell you happened? She told me that the child had uh, was choking on a piece of chicken. And did she tell you what she did in response to that? Yes, that she had tried the Heimlich maneuver at the uh, in the kitchen sink, and uh, but was unsuccessful. Okay. Um, and did she tell you anything else? No. Did she, when you say unsuccessful, did she indicate to you whether or not um, whatever the child um, allegedly was choking on came out? Uh, apparently, I would say no, since the fire department was so eager to get her, get the child to the ambulance and, you know, take care of it. And she even, like I said, she did admit that she had called 911 when the child had turned white. But again, she also said to me that she was not very good at it, talking about the Heimlich maneuver. Okay. And um, did you, did she go into any further detail about not being very good at it? No. Did she describe to you in any manner what she, what she had done when she talked about putting the child over the sink and doing the Heimlich? She did not. After that conversation, um, what did you do next? Went back outside. Um, the paramedics advised me, and uh, at this point, too, a sheriff's deputy had also arrived on scene as well with me, and advised us that the child, I'm sorry, that they needed somebody to drive the ambulance because both the EMS techs needed to work on the child, and uh, the deputy had volunteered to take it, to drive it up to uh, Henry Medical. Where was the mother when you went outside and had this conversation with the paramedics in the Henry County Sheriff's Department? She was still in the house. What happened at that point? Again, uh, like I said, the deputy volunteered to uh, drive the ambulance once they got, uh, they meaning the EMS techs, once they got taken, you know, ready or prepared, um, they left. Then the Ms. Rosenbaum, after securing the house, also left as well to go up to Henry Medical. When you say securing the house, did you go inside with her prior to her um, leaving? Or no, I her? waited. I was outside. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, locked, make sure all the doors and everything was locked up. And then she went up to Henry Medical as well. Okay. And what did you do? I then went back in service. Okay. At some point in time later on that evening, did you get another call to that location? Yes, ma'am, I did around 620. I'm sorry, 6.20 is when I went back in service from there, and then 7.13, that, eight, that same day, I got dispatched back out to the house. What was the call in, at that time? I was asked to go back out to the house and secure it, and uh, meaning basically I sat on the house until CID arrived. Okay. And did you do that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you ever make entry into the home prior to CID arriving? No, the house was locked. I, I couldn't have got in there. Was there anyone else at the location when you arrived? No. Eventually, did anyone arrive? Yes, CID arrived, and then the, uh, like I said, Mr. and Ms. Rosenbaum also arrived. Okay. Did anyone go inside the home at that point once CID arrived and the defendants arrived? Yes, all of us did. Okay. And where did you go? When you first walk into the house through the front door, if I remember correctly, there's a room that was on the right-hand side, like a living room or sitting room, whatever. And uh, myself and Mr. and Ms. Rosenbaum stayed there and uh, while CID conducted a search warrant. Let me ask you, who arrived first, CID or the defendants? CID. Okay. And um, at the point that the defendants arrived, um, were the CID and yourself let in? Yes. Okay. And who let you guys in? The, the parents. And once you said you went, you went inside the home, Yes. where did the Rosenbaum's go? They were in there with me, okay. that same room. They, like I said, I basically sat with them while CID did what they needed to do. During the time you were sitting with them, approximately how long was that? How long was I with them? Yes. Um, like I said, I got there around 7.13, and I did not leave the scene until 1.46 that morning. And are you sitting with the Rosenbaums that entire time? Yes. And um, are you having any discussion with them? We talked about uh, just this and that. You know, nothing important, but we never, ever discussed the case at any point. We just... I'm sorry, but kind of just BS'd. <laughs> what was there to be to do in this, this um, 
several hours of speaking with them. They were calm. Did they ever appear to be upset, emotionally crying, or anything of that nature? Not that I recall. Nothing further. You don't have an independent recollection, do you? I'm sorry? I said, do you have an independent recollection or have you read your report in preparation for coming? I've read my report. Okay. So as you sit here today, you don't remember um, actually four years ago what happened, but you've been refreshed by your report, correct? Correct. And so in your report, you said you made contact with Ms. Rosenbaum. So you must have gone in the house to make contact with Ms. Rosenbaum, correct? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Rosenbaum told you the child was choking on a piece of chicken, correct? Yes, ma'am. She didn't tell you anything about whether the chicken had been expelled or not? No, she did not. Okay. And Ms. Rosenbaum told you that she placed the ch child at the sink and tried the Heimlich, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, after she... Um, after the, the ambulance left to go uh, to take the child to Henry Piedmont, did you see Ms. Uh, Rosenbaum leave the house and, and follow the ambulance to Piedmont Henry? Yes, ma'am. I was the last one to leave. And, and everybody was gone when I left. And she had a little girl with her at that time? I did not see a little girl. You didn't see it? No. Did you look in the car? I didn't pay a lot of attention to it, but the only person, as I said before, that I ever saw was Ms. Rosenbaum. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, one, one last question. I'll show you what's been marked as Exhibit 132. And ask you if you can identify that. I don't recall this room. You don't recall the living room? So you didn't go into the living room? Again, if I remember, I was, like I said, I met her in the kitchen. Okay. Again, that's where she showed me, like I said, she talked about the sink and stuff. And that's not the room that we were in when I sat with them. You sat in a little ante room? Uh, yeah. Um, and so you... Um, as you're sitting here today, you're remembering based on what you've written in your report, correct? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. That's all I have. Just one question. Did Ms. Rosenbaum go back inside the home prior to leaving to go to Henry County, Piedmont? I don't recall her ever. I don't recall her coming out and then turn around and going back in. So to your recollection, she never came out of the house while you were outside with the paramedics and the sheriffs? No. Nothing further. Are you saying with certainty now that she was not at the ambulance door with the child? I said as best I can remember. Okay. Again, so it, I, you, you I'm only remember. saying what I remember. And you only remember what you've read in your report, correct? Yes, ma'am. There's nothing in your report about whether she was or was not at the ambulance door. That is correct. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Nothing further to say. All right, thank you. Just thank you. step down. Uh, you're excused unless there's an objection. Nothing to say. Okay. State calls next witness. State calls Dr. Balu Manning. Raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God? You can put your uh, hand down. Please state your true and correct name for the record. I'm sorry? State your name for the record. Dr. Balu Marnie. Okay. And sir, how are you employed? You spell name. Sure. Can you spell your name for us? Uh, last name is Yam A Yan I. 
First name B A L U. And Dr. Mani, um, what kind of work do you do? What kind of work I do? Yes. Uh, I'm a radiologist. And how long have you been a radiologist? Uh, more than 35 years. And where did you first, uh, where did you first uh, get your education in radiology? Uh, in India. And how long have you been in the United States? Uh, 30, 40 years. And were you also practiced, uh, are you also licensed to practice medicine here in the United States? Yes, sir. And are you a practicing radiologist? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, where, where is your current practice? I practice in um, Riverdale, Upper Riverdale Road, next to Southern Regional Medical Center. I'm sorry, can you say the last part? Uh, Upper Riverdale Road, next to Southern Regional Medical Center. Next to Southern Regional Medical Center. Okay, great. Um, and do you sometimes read uh, x-rays for um, hospitals? Hospital? Yes. I used to be working in a hospital until 2017, so I was in the hospital. In 2015, where were you working? Um, Piedmont Henry Hospital. So Piedmont Henry Hospital? All right. And did you, have, did you read some x-rays regarding a patient by the name of Layla Daniel? I don't remember exactly, but I've been shown the x-rays I read by you. Okay, and the name is actually on there, correct? The name of the patient? Um, I don't remember the patient's name. Sure. Let me, look, let me have you look at State's Exhibit 124. It's behind you. Yeah. Do you see, uh, do you see the patient's name? Lila Murray Daniel. Okay. And are you the radiologist who read the, uh, the x-rays in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so I, we're currently looking, what kind of um, x-rays, um, was it, let me ask you this, was it the full body? No, x-ray the whole body, you're correct. X-ray the whole body, okay. So I'll show you State's Exhibit 125. This is just an x-ray of the skull, correct? Yes, sir. All right. How about 126? Was there also an x-ray done? And if we could have the lights just come down. Is this also an x-ray that you've read? Yeah. Um, in, the, in States 126, did you see anything abnormal in States 126? I'm unable to see anything abnormal in this x-ray. Okay. How about States 127? What kind of x-ray is this? This is a chest lateral view. Okay. And States 128? This is the entire spine lateral view. How about States 131? What kind of, what, what kind of x-ray is this? This is the AP view of the left lower extremity. The left lower extremity? Yes, sir. Okay. How about states 132? The other view of the left lower extremity. So it's a lateral view of the left, left lower extremity? Yes, sir. Great. Um, and these are all, you said this was a full body x-ray, correct? Yes, sir. So you're reading all of these x-rays, correct? So far in any of these x-rays, did you find anything abnormal? Not in these states so far. Okay. States 133, what are we looking at here? The, the AP view of the pelvis and the upper thigh area. Okay. So that was the AP view, you said? Yeah. And so that would be anterior, posterior, correct? Correct. Um, and if I'm correct, that means it would be shot from, the x-ray machine would be in front of the person and shot back. From the x-ray machine in front of you and the film behind you. Okay. How about states of 134? What are we looking at here? This is the um, view of the right upper extremity. And is this just another view of the right extremity? Yes, sir. All right. Anything abnormal in states 134? No, not in these. All right. What are we looking at in states 136? This is a AP view of the right lower extremity, and there is an old uh, subacute fracture of the proximal tibia. So you said you see an older uh, uh, fracture of the proximal tibia? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, give you the, I don't know if the laser one's here, but I'll give you this pointer. Um, what are we looking at here when you said you're, there's an older fracture of the left or the right uh, proximal tibia? If you look at here, there is the actual bone here, and this is the new bone, or the bone that's being formed after a fracture has been there. So what happens is when you have a fracture, the, the, the covering of the bone leaks blood, and the blood contains cells that can become bone. So these are new bones that are being formed to make the bridge the gap between the broken bone to 
joined together. Okay. And does this bone look like look like it is healing? Yes, sir. It's healing. It is healing. Oh, it's healing. Yeah. Okay. It has been there for at least a few weeks. At least a few weeks. Yeah. Great. And is this stage one thirty seven? Is this just another view of that same extremity? It's hard to see, but you can see the new bone formation striking behind the proximal tibia. I want to go ahead and show you states 130. Um, what are we looking at in states 130? This is the of the left upper extremity, and this is, there is a fracture of the, this is called ulna, this is called radius. There's a mid ulna fracture. If you look carefully, there are fuzzy areas around the fracture, basically meaning there is healing that's happening. <coughs> and from that, can you can you give it a can you when does healing when can you start to see healing on an X-ray? About about how long until you uh, it, initially after the fracture you develop blood pool there and the blood pool there are cells that are supposed to form newborns to to uh, bridge the board. So this should be at least two weeks one week to two weeks old to have this kind of fracture. The, the bone, even though the cells are there, the cell to become a bone, it takes at least one to two weeks. So this is at least two weeks old fracture. Okay, at least a two weeks old. How about at the other end? Can you say, can you give an approximation as to, right. it, it probably is no more than X number of weeks. Right, but in one to three weeks age. So the, the, uh, this bone is approximately this break is approximately one to three weeks age. Oh, I'm sorry? This break is approximately one to three weeks correct. old. Correct. Correct. Okay. And is it states one one twenty nine? Are we looking at the same extremity? It's the same uh, fracture, looking at in an opposite angle, and you can see the same thing. You can see a fussy newborn around it, and the fracture line right there. Have you ever heard the term non-union fracture? Non-union fracture. Happened after a long time, the fracture, when they are not really splintered well, and the fractured bones keep rubbing on each other, then they become sclerotic, and the, the bridging callus is broken many times, and they do not look like joining, so they have a sclerotic margin. This area where I see the fracture line will become wide. So this is not a non-union. This is still a fracture in the healing process. So this is not a union, non-union fracture, correct? Based on my opinion, it's not non-union. Okay. Um, and do non-union fractures look anything like that? I'm sorry? Uh, do non-union fractures look like that on X-ray? No. Non-union fracture will have more sclerotic appearing fracture lines. Okay. And have in the all the years that you've been a radiologist, have you ever seen a non-union fracture in a two-year-old patient? No. Thank you, sir. Cross. Cross. Yes. Dr. Mani, do you, um, you talked about the two arms, correct? I'm sorry? You talked about the two arms. Two arms? Yes. You talked about the, the broken arm. Broken bone, yeah. Yes. And um, do you recall having um, written a, um, an impression of that arm? Did you write an impression? I'm sure I, I write impression on my report, yes. Okay. Um, if I may ask you this, do you recall saying that this was a non-union, a fracture and non-union of the mid-shaft of the left ulna? Non-union basically means it's not been splintered. So it was a non-union fracture? It's a fracture in healing phase without a splinting place. And isn't it true that you wrote that evidence of subacute fracture and non-union of the mid-shaft of the left radius and right proximal tibia? Isn't that what you wrote? Okay. Non-union basically means it is not splintered to become a closer opposition, so they, uni they unite faster. Do you recall having called it a non-union 
fracture, fracture and non-union of the mid-shaft? Um, it's possible. It's possible. Would it help you to refresh your recollection to look at that? Oh, you can show me the report, yeah. Do you have a paper copy? I don't, Your Honor. I could make a paper copy. Well, we're going to need a paper copy. Okay. Your Honor, if I could have about five minutes and... <coughs> okay. Um, let me get a sense for how much longer we have with this witness. Not much. Is, not much? Not. If the parties will agree that what's on the screen is something that um, he can view, in other words, that is authentically uh, the document that we produced and made a part of the record, uh, then I don't have a problem with this procedure so long as when we're through with court today, there's an agreement and stipulation to supplement the record of this piece of paper. Is there any objection to proceeding like that? No, no. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Let me show you a copy of the medical report and see if your impression is that's a non-union of the mid-shaft. Yes. Thank you. What did you mean in your report when you wrote non-union? Can you explain that to us? The fracture um, bone is not opposed to each other. They are separated by a few millimeters. So essentially, if I'm correct, the, the bone is not one piece. Not opposed to each other. OK. So is what you wrote in here different than the term non-union fracture? Correct. And why is that different? Tell us. Non-union fractures are old, very old fractures that they are completed healing, but they are not really joined together. So basically, they form a pseudo joint between the fractured bone. That is fracture non-union. This is, this is a, maybe the term was not used correctly. This is a, Storm used to tell that the fracture lines are not opposed to each other, meaning that they are potentially um, may go into non-union if you don't put them together closely. Do you see that callus formation that you talked about on the x-ray in a non-union fracture? Non-union fractures are old fractures. They have a lot of callus, and they have sclerotic appearing broken areas. Non-union fracture is different from what I meant in the report was to basically say they're not opposed to each other. They're not being splintered appropriately. So I guess my question, so let's, let's break it down. So when you say non-union, you mean that they are, not, um, they are not perfectly lined up to each other? Is that correct? Non-union means the bone is not going to join to each other because there has been um, a gap between them forming a pseudo joint space, basically meaning that they will not ever be one unit. Is that what you see in this x-ray? No, this is a healing fracture with, with the opposing surfaces of the fracture line not being splintered appropriately. Okay. So in this particular uh, x-ray, how old do you think, how old do you, from what you can tell, how old is this fracture? The, the fracture must be at least one to two weeks old and probably not more than four or five weeks. Okay. So the term that you used in this, in, in uh... Subacute fracture. Yes. The, the term you used in uh, 133, the non-union, that is different from the term non-union fracture, correct? Correct. 
Nothing further. All right. Thank you, Doctor. You can step down. Any objections, Dr. Reeves? Nothing stated. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break there. And um, again, we appreciate your time and your attention. And um, thank you for another full day. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock.